Hello and welcome. In India's worst bridge tragedy in decades, over 130 people are dead after a bridge collapsed in Morbi in Gujarat. And this includes 47 children. The Gujarat-based Oreva group has been accused of violating multiple safety rules leading to this huge tragedy just four days after the bridge reopened for public use. Nine people have been arrested. But none of them are top bosses or persons in positions of authority who would have taken decisions. Most of them are low-level employees, managers of Voreva, the company that renovated the bridge, ticket collectors, bridge repair contractors, and three security guards even, whose job was to control the crowds. Will anyone be held accountable for these deaths? मेरे चाचा के दो लड़के थे उसकी बीवी थी उसके दोनों भाई के दो दो बच्चे थे एक हमारी बहन थी उसके दो बच्चे थे टोटल आठ आदमी थे उसमें एक हमारा जो भाई था उसकी बीवी बच गई बाकी सात और सात डेड हो गए कल वो लोग वहीं पुल पे गए हुए थे जी हाँ हमारी बहन आई थी जामनगर से उसको लेके घूमने गए थे 47 of the over 130 people dead in the Morbi bridge collapse so far are children. For most, the transition from a relaxed Sunday outing to death took just a few seconds. As this suspension bridge, opened just days ago after months of renovation, collapsed. As the dead count mounted through the night and early morning, uncontrollable sorrow and many numbed by the scale of the tragedy. Twelve family members of BJP MP from nearby Rajkot, Mohan Bhai Kundaria, died in the bridge collapse. The MP had coordinated relief and rescue operations all night. At Morbi's government hospital, three kilometers away from the incident spot, survivors recounted the horror. Asmin bhai, you were in the bridge when you were in the bridge. How many hours did you come to the bridge? It's 6 hours. And how many people will be in the bridge? 400 and 500 people. 400 and 500 people. Did you buy a ticket? Yes. Did you show me the ticket? तो ये वो टिकट है मैं आपको दिखा दूं ये अस्मिन भाई हमें दिखा रहे हैं सत्रह रुपए का ये टिकट है जो सभी लोगों को बेचा गया था और इसमें ओरेवा का आप इसमें देख सकते हैं इसमें ओरेवा कंपनी का ब्रांडिंग भी आपको दिखेगा आप कब से आप यहीं पे बैठे हैं कल से हाँ कल शाम से यहीं पे बैठे हैं The bridge, a heritage structure originally constructed by the British, was recently renovated by the Gujarat-based Oriva Group. A watchmaker with no record of infrastructure projects that got a two crore rupee bridge repair contract for unexplained reasons. Uh, since last night, teams of SDRF, NDRF, best swimmers and divers from the state were all rushed into the spot. Uh, in fact, all the units of defense that the army, uh, navy and the air force were also rushed in and they swung into action from last night. Uh, this incident happened at about uh, 6.30 in the evening when a bridge when a bridge a cable bridge which is right in front uh, you know right uh, just above the river machu it collapsed and it was a cable bridge which was a historical bridge in morbi in gujarat with tanushri pandey and ankit tyagi bureau report ndtv so 47 children killed in this gujarat bridge tragedy the youngest just two years old. The colonial era bridge, shut for renovation for seven months, collapsed on Sunday evening, killing over 130, including these 47 children. The youngest, just a two year old, a century old cable bridge over the river Machu in Gujarat's Morbi, snapped due to a heavy rush of people on a bridge that had just recently opened up to the public after repairs and renovations. How was this allowed to happen? There are many tough questions and NDTV is asking them.
और सर हाय सर सर एक क्वेश्चन लेना चाहूंगी सर ये जो ब्रिज खुला था इसे फिटनेस सर्टिफिकेट लिया गया था सर गवर्नमेंट ने फिटनेस सर्टिफिकेट दिया था उरेबा ग्रुप को सर सर गवर्नमेंट हैज मेजर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज प्लीज बता दीजिए हर्ष जी आप यहाँ पे पूरी रात मौजूद थे सर इट्स इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन गवर्नमेंट हैज टू आंसर प्लीज सर हर सर प्लीज ये सवाल का जवाब दे दीजिए की गवर्नमेंट ने एक फिटनेस सर्टिफिकेट दिया था कि नहीं था तो क्या सर ब्रिज को सर्टिफिकेट फिटनेस सर्टिफिकेट हजारों के लोग यहाँ पे आ रहे हैं सरकार कहाँ थी सर ऑफिशियल्स कहाँ थे सर जांच कमेटी का गठन किया है और जांच कमेटी वो अपने एक्सपर्ट की कमेटी है टेक्निकल एक्सपर्ट की कमेटी है वो निष्कर्ष जो भी ढूंढेंगे उसके मुताबिक जो भी करना पड़ेगा सरकार का देखिए सर आपसे बहुत शुक्रिया बट सर एक तरीके की जाँच कमेटी सो दैट वॉज दैट वॉज दैट वॉज एमओ आपको क्या लगता है कि सरकार अपना रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी से हाथ धो रही है कि सही बात नहीं वो तो मुझे मालूम नहीं है सर्टिफिकेट लिया नहीं लिया वो तो मुझे मालूम नहीं है लेकिन वो जो घटना घटी है वो एक मानव सहज एक दुखद घटना हुई है तो इनमें क्या हुआ है वो तो सर्च के बाद मालूम होगा लेकिन गवर्नमेंट ने पूरी तरह से ये सीरियसली मैटर लिया है और खुद सी भी यहाँ है और गवर्नमेंट के पूरे प्रतिनिधि भी यहाँ है इनके बारे में आगे जो सर्च करके जो कुछ इनमें जिम्मेदार होंगे इनके करेंगे लेकिन अब ये घटना हुई है वो तो सबके लिए परिवारों के लिए दुखद घटना हुई बिल्कुल और सर अगर सरकार की गलती आई सामने तो आप लोग क्या एक्शन लेंगे गवर्नमेंट का इश्यू है वो सर करके बाद में जो इश्यू आएगा उनके बारे में बट सर 140 लोग अपनी जान गवा चुके हैं आप सो दैट वॉज दी एक्स एम एल एंड ही ट्राइंग टू इवेट दफ क्वेश्चन tomorrow the advanced spg party's office uh, security team are here you can see this uh, vehicle which says spg and uh, police so the advanced parties are here for security the senior officials of the police in fact came here uh, to this very spot this is from where uh, you can have access uh, to the uh, bridge that uh, uh, old gate that you see that takes you to that bridge so the advanced parties had come here uh, to assess the security situation the prime minister is expected uh, to be in morbi at 1 pm uh, tomorrow uh, and uh, is expected to come and inspect the very place uh, where the bridge collapse uh, took place so, uh, so already Uh, you know massive uh, security arrangements and of course the entire administration on its toes for the vvip visit which is expected tomorrow here in morbi with vj praveen ankit tyagi for ndtv in morbi Meanwhile, the search operation in the Sir River, where the bridge snapped, will resume on Tuesday morning, and dozens of bodies are still feared trapped in the muddy waters. Tickets were sold for 12 to 17 rupees to nearly 500 people when the bridge could only take the weight of 125. And that's not all. Investigations show that no tender was issued for this bridge repair contract, and old wires weren't even changed. This is the Morbi Bridge last week at its reopening. This is Jaisuk Bhai Patel and his family. He heads the firm which renovated and reopened it 5 days ago before Sunday's disaster. The firm is Oreva, known for making clocks, LED lighting and similar electronics. This is the same company which manufactures clocks alarm clocks watch telephones calculators e bikes according to their uh, you know website this company was given possibly without scrutiny a contract to repair a 140 uh, year old bridge the police has filed an fir which says they did not conduct a proper quality check or take adequate care or manage matters properly it accuses them of being aware of the possibility of fatal dangers saying Due to their seriously irresponsible and careless gesture of opening up the bridge to the public on the 26th of October 2022 despite anticipating the possible consequences of injury and even death to the common people many people have lost their lives the bridge collapsed when an old cable which was not changed during the said renovation snapped plunging hundreds of people into the river there were over 300 people on it For years there had been reports of how precarious this bridge was 
An investigation by NDTV pieces together key parts of what happened. At a press conference last week, the firm's boss made some revealing statements. Firstly, Oreva outsourced the renovation and it cost 2 crore rupees. Secondly, they were to manage the bridge for at least 7 years, charging an entry fee, which would be hiked annually. Thirdly, the firm's boss promised the renovations would last 8 to 10 years. It did not last a week. In fact, shockingly, the firm seems concerned about the sturdiness of the bridge even after the renovation. This is the tender between the firm Morbi Municipal Corporation and Ajanta Manufacturing Private Limited. The contract was given for renovation maintenance. Renovation was to take at least 8 to 10 months, but the bridge reopened only in 7. With Tanushri Pandey and Ankit Tyagi in Morbi, Bureau Report, NDTV. So as Ankit uh, reports there, the Prime Minister will be visiting uh, the area tomorrow. Meanwhile, the opposition has dug out a video of the Prime Minister attacking Mamta Banerjee. This was uh, during the Bengal elections when a bridge had collapsed in the city just before the elections. And that issue had become completely politicized. And the opposition is asking the Prime Minister to hold his own party members and party authorities in Gujarat up to the same standards. But in the middle of all of this politics, Spare a thought for the families of the 130 dead for whom life will never be the same again. Welcome back. Now, the homes of two editors of the new site, The Wire, were searched by the Delhi police and their phones and laptops seized on Monday evening after a complaint by the BJP's Amit Malvia. They've been accused of cheating and forgery in a case filed on a complaint by Amit Malvia, who heads the BJP's IT cell. The Wire recently retracted a series of investigative reports that claimed that Meta, that's the parent company of the social media giants WhatsApp, Facebook and Instagram, had given certain privileges to Mr. Malvia, which he could use to take down posts that he thought were critical of the BJP. The Wire retracted the stories after conducting an internal review of the technical source material used with the help of external experts. But the complaint, Bamat Malvia alleges, that The Wire forged documents to quote, malign and tarnish his reputation. Delhi police on Monday evening conducted searches at the premises of The Wire and its editor Siddharth Vardarajan, MK Venu and few others in connection with the uh, media organization's reportage over uh, Instagram. This particular uh, search operation uh, was based on the FAR that the Delhi police crime branch registered based on the complaint from BJP IT cell in charge Amit Malvia. Amit Malvia had alleged that The Wire along with the editors uh, criminally conspired in order to malign uh, the reputation of Amit Malvia and taking cognizance of the complaint by Amit Malvia. The Delhi police had registered an FIR against The Wire and also its editors including Siddharth Vardarajan, MK Veno and others for allegedly uh, criminally conspiring and also forge and also uh, uh, for uh, on allegations of forgery and also cheating over their reportage over uh, the Instagram uh, story. In fact, The Wire had done a story uh, that allegedly on the uh, influence of Amit Malvia, the Instagram uh, was taking down some of the posts of the users and, ba and based on that particular reportage, there were several uh, uh, there were several uh, uh, back and forth uh, between the wire and also the Instagram, the Meta uh, company. In fact, the Meta had said some of the documents that the wire had uh, put out uh, are fabricated. So after an internal review, the wire had taken down, retracted this entire uh, series of uh, stories on this particular subject. But Amit Malvia had filed a criminal complaint with the Delhi police and taking cognizance of this particular criminal complaint. Today, uh, that's on uh, Monday evening, the Delhi uh, police conducted searches at the premises of wire office premises and also the residential premises of both Siddharth Vadarajan and also MK Venon. What we are being told is that all their uh, electronic devices have been seized by the Delhi police. 
with camera person Joseph. This is Arvind Gunaseka for NDTV. TV. And the big international story, Brazil's former leftist president Lula da Silva has sealed an astonishing political comeback, beating Bolsonaro. Brazil has a new leader, the leftist worker party's Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, who has defeated incumbent Jair Bolsonaro last Sunday in a very tight race. With 98.8% of the votes tallied in the runoff vote, Da Silva had 50.8% and Bolsonaro 49.2%. It is a stunning return to power for Da Silva, the 77-year-old whose 2018 imprisonment over a corruption scandal sidelined him from that year's election paving the way for then-candidate Bolsonaro's win and four years of far-right politics. This victory heralds the political about-face for Latin America's largest country after Bolsonaro's far-right administration. De Silva's win represents the return of the left into power in Brazil, concluding a comeback for Lula da Silva after a series of corruption allegations led to his imprisonment for 580 days. The sentences were later annulled by the Supreme Court, clearing his path to run for re-election. Chegamos ao final de uma das mais importantes eleições da nossa história. Uma eleição que colocou frente a frente dois projetos opostos de país. E que hoje tem um único e grande vencedor, o povo brasileiro. Essa, esta não é uma vitória minha nem do PT, nem dos partidos que me apoiaram nessa campanha. É a vitória de um imenso movimento democrático que se tornou, que se formou acima dos partidos políticos, dos interesses pessoais, das ideologias, para que a democracia saísse vencedora. Meanwhile, Bolsonaro, who had been threatening for months to not concede defeat if he was beaten, is yet to publicly react. De fato, foi um resultado muito próximo, mas o importante é que nós temos a possibilidade de ter novamente um líder democrático, um líder que está interessado no seu povo, de fato, e que trabalha para a igualdade e para a justiça social. E nesse momento, essa é a nossa alegria. This will be the Silva's third term after previously governing Brazil for two consecutive terms between 2003 and 2010. However, this time, the Silva will be facing a deeply fractured nation and urgent environmental issues, including rampant deforestation in the Amazon and deteriorating post-pandemic conditions. With Kainath, this is Parmeshwar Bhava for NDTV. And Delhi is officially now India's most polluted city, the second most polluted city in the world. And that's not all. It's predicted to get worse as stubble fires begin rising in Punjab. The haze of Delhi is thick with pollutants. It causes itchy eyes and scratchy throats and far more serious ailments, doctors say. And in the coming days, it's likely to worsen according to the latest forecast. The number of farm fires in especially Punjab have started to rise. The share in Delhi's pollution is at a season's high of 26%, higher than 20% reported this time last year. On the back foot, the Ahmadmi party in power in both Punjab and Delhi says that pollution control can't be done by one state individually. कि जो दिल्ली के अंदर प्रदूषण की समस्या है, वो राज्य की समस्या नहीं है। जब तक सभी लोग मिलकर के प्रयास नहीं करेंगे, तब तक इसका समाधान नहीं संभव है। उसमें केंद्र सरकार को भी लगना पड़ेगा, राज्य सरकारों को भी लगना पड़ेगा। This polluted air from Punjab and Haryana is drifting to Delhi and most of North India and the low wind speed and low temperatures make sure that the pollutants are not dispersed. 
The national capital today turned into the most polluted city in the country. But as farm fires add to Delhi's pollution, farmers say they are helpless. Despite a range of promises made by the governments of Delhi's neighboring states, the fire counts this week, shown in the red, were above the figures reported this time last year, shown in black. There were over 1,600 fire counts reported in a day, versus 1,000 reported last year. To bring down stubble burning, farmers need more than just promises and actual feasible alternatives. In New Delhi, with camera person Sushil Rathi, Priyanshi Sharma for NDTV. And that's the news at this hour. Bye-bye.